welcome to the Love People Use Things podcast. My name is Matt Frad. This is the show for people who want to be free of porn, who want to live a more beautiful life. See, that's the thing. It's not just being free from porn, as if that were the victory. If that were the case, it would be sort of like saying uh, the point of life is to be cancer free or something like that. And you say, okay, but now that I am cancer free, what's the point? Well, there is no point. It's good for you. You're cancer free or something. I mean, we can talk about being free from things and free for things. And I think in our culture, uh, in our society, we talk a lot about being free from things, but not often do we talk about being free for things. And there really is a distinction. You know, so if you said to somebody, are you free? They would say yes. And what they probably mean is free from constraints. Uh, But this silly little uh, uh, joke can show you why there is much more uh, to freedom than being free from constraints. Suppose you were to go to a taxi driver and say, excuse me, are you free? And he said yes. And you went, hooray for freedom and walked off. That's stupid, right? (laughs) It's not just about being free from bad things, free from constraints. We're also made for something, all right? And I'm a Christian. I believe I'm made to love and serve God and to love other people and to fulfill the will of God in in as much as I understand it. Um, But, you know, we can take a lot of meaning, can't we, in our relationships with people, in fighting for what's right and helping people to find their purpose and things like this. So, Porn distracts us from our purpose, right? I mean, think of the hours we spend wasting time on it, the lies that it tells us about who we are and about who other people are. We want to be free of porn so that we can be free to do things that are true, good, and beautiful. And that's what I want to talk about today, the true, the good, and the beautiful. In Christian speak, uh, the true, good, and beautiful are what is called transcendentals. There's, There's also the transcendental of one. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that a great deal. But essentially, the true, the good, and the beautiful in, well, Thomas Aquinas talks about this, others do too. These are synonymous with being. So, whatever is, is one. That is to say, it's undivided in itself and it's divided uh, from the rest. Uh, Everything is good in as much as it is. All right. So, in as much as something is, it is beautiful uh, and it is good. And that's why we desire it. Anyway, as I say, I don't want to get into a whole uh, lecture on this here, but the true, the good, and the beautiful is what we desire. Now, for Christians, we think that's true because we think that's what God is. So, Christians don't think that God has goodness or that God has beauty or that God has truth. We think that God is these things. That God is good, is true, is beautiful. But even if you're not a Christian, I think you'll agree with me that the true, the good, and the beautiful is what all of us desire. Or why do we desire it? Well, we desire it because we think it'll make us happy. Uh, Happiness is what we all want. Uh, People say, I want to be rich so that I can be happy. Or I want to be famous so that I can be happy. Or I want to be powerful so I can be happy. Nobody says the, 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 the reverse of that. No one says, I want to be happy so I can be rich. Or I want to be happy so I can be famous. Or I want to be happy so that I can be powerful. It's happiness that we want. And it's the true, the good, and the beautiful. Having these things, we believe, is what will actually make us happy. And I don't think that these things are relative. I think they're true for all of us. You know, um, no one out there is listening to me thinking, no, I I disagree. I don't want the truth. Yeah, I, I want to live in ignorance. No one thinks that. Even if the police come to your door at one in the morning and say something really bad has happened, uh, you better sit down. You don't say, oh, well, then I don't want to know it. Thank you, though. Uh, Have a great night. No, you want to know the truth, even when the truth will cause you pain. Uh, Likewise, with the good, we want what is good. If I tell you there's a restaurant up the road and it's really, really quite bad, you don't say, oh, great. Well, let me call and see if they have any uh, spots available or if I have to make a reservation. <clears throat> we naturally want what we perceive to be good. And then finally, that we want the beautiful. Now, sometimes it's said that beauty is in the eye of the holder, and there might be some truth to that, but I do think that there's an objectivity to beauty, that beauty actually exists in things, and it isn't just something uh, that is, you know, uh, relative to different people. I mean, if it was something that's relative to different people, what's with all these scenic routes that we see when we drive out, say, in the country or whatever? Uh, there does tend to be an agreement as to what is beautiful. So I think, you know, three things Thomas Aquinas says in regards to what makes something beautiful is it has to have integrity, proportion, and clarity. 
So it has to have integrity. So like if you were to see a tree and it had half of its limbs lopped off so that it wouldn't hit the power lines um, or it was diseased in some way, uh, then that wouldn't be as beautiful as a tree that was proportionate and integral, you know, had, had it, had, there was no defect in it. You know, so I, I think this, uh, this is what we all long for. The true, the good, and the beautiful. Now, you might say to yourself, I thought this was a podcast on porn. Yes, I'm, I'm getting to that. Because here's the point. <clears throat> In the Nicomachean Ethics by Aristotle, Aristotle talks about how all men desire happiness, but men dis- disagree as to what m- brings happiness, yeah? But, but what he says, and what others have said, what Aquinas has said and others, is that we can accustom ourselves to things that aren't actually true, good, or beautiful. So even though you and I all desire what's true, good, and beautiful, we can become accustomed to desiring things that are false, bad, and ugly. Now, nobody ever uh, seeks to do something that they think is bad for them. Did you know that? You've never done that in your life. You've done things that have been bad for you, so have I. Uh, You've done things that are ugly, but you've never willingly done something that you thought would bring you more harm than good. So when you turn to pornography, you don't do it because you say to yourself, this will make me miserable and I want to exploit women or something. Rather, you tell yourself a lie, sort of like the lies Noah was talking about in last week's episode, which was an excellent episode, by the way. If you haven't listened to it, go check it out. You know, we lie to ourselves a lot, you know, so you're sitting at the computer and you think, okay, just one more time, you know, it's not going to make me a rapist or anything. And this is just to relax anyway. Like I'm always going to be like this and maybe porn's good for you anyway. I mean, gee, it's just sex. Sex is good, isn't it? So what's the problem, right? We lie to ourselves and, and, and we seek porn as a good for us because we think it'll actually satisfy us. That's what good things do. So, you know, we can accustom ourselves to things that aren't actually true, good or beautiful, but which we perceive to be true, good, and beautiful. This is why we make bad decisions. Um, so, again, what does this have to do with porn? What does this have to do with recovery? Well, here's the challenge I want to offer to you and me this week. I think we need to begin to cultivate uh, our desire for what is truly good, not just good apparently, right? Uh, that's actually true and not something that's false but appears true, and things that are actually beautiful. Um, Let me give an analogy. I think this might help. Um, When I grew up, I spent a lot of time drinking Coca-Cola, you know, (laughs) eating Doritos, um, playing video games, and watching porn. Like, this is what I did. And who the heck doesn't like Doritos and Coca-Cola? It's super sweet. The flavors are ridiculously powerful. I mean, what can really compete with it? I mean, if, if your parents kind of give you that stuff when you're young, and then they say, why don't you eat fruit? And you think, you ask, seriously? Why don't I eat fruit? Have you tried fruit? It's the worst. Yeah. So the point is this, that even though, say, fruit, like a beautiful peach or an apple or pineapple, something like that, is not only better for you, right, but you, it, it's more natural, right? It's good for you. But you can accustom yourself to thinking it actually doesn't have much flavor. It reminds me of the lady who said she wanted to begin to eat more fruits and vegetables, but she wasn't sure how to make her strawberries sweet if she couldn't use Splendor. Wow. Yeah. So, the point is this, we can accustom ourselves to bad food, uh, to, to, to bad drink, right? And begin to think that food and drink, that's actually much better for us. And, you know, what else do you say? Better all around. Like a steak is clearly better than a bag of Doritos, you know? But if you've spent your childhood just eating junk, you might not want a steak, when you really should, you know, it's a lot better than bloody Doritos. Or if all you've drunk is, um, you know, a Gatorade and Coca-Cola and somebody offers you a glass of carrot juice or whatever, you know, you might not have carrot juice, but water or, and you think, oh, this is disgusting. I don't want this. Well, it's not disgusting. You've actually just sort of um, accustomed yourself to drinking and eating what's actually really bad for you. Okay, so... This is the challenge, right? So it's not just about not looking at porn. 
It's about loving what's actually true, good, and beautiful. Because when we love what's true, good, and beautiful, when we desire what's true, good, and beautiful, when we pursue what's true, good, and beautiful, when we, when we participate in what's true, good, and beautiful, I think our desire for the vulgar and banal will begin to decrease. So, here's my two challenges. Cut out the banal and cultivate your desire for what's genuinely beautiful. Cut out the banal and cultivate your desire for what is truly beautiful. Okay, now banal just just means sort of boring, you know, and things that are boring can appear beautiful to us if, again, if we've kind of habituated ourselves to that thing. So, here's some suggestions I'm going to make. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to take my advice. You Maybe maybe you think I'm going too far here, but maybe there's some things in here that you will agree with. So, here's one way to kind of cut out the the, the ugly, the banal, the, the drab, the uh, those things which titillate but don't satisfy, you know. That is actually another good analogy with food. Like, if you sit down and eat a, you know, say, uh, I don't know, sushi or steak and mashed potatoes, you get to a point where you're like, oh, wow, like I am satiated, like I'm, I'm full and satisfied. You notice it doesn't really do that when it comes to candy or cheese puffs or anything like that. Like you just keep eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and you keep wanting more because they're so salty and so sweet, you know, but they don't actually ever satisfy, do they? It's kind of like porn, I think. So here's some ideas to cut out the banal. Okay, so there are things in your life that you turn to. There are things in my life that I turn to that aren't healthy for us. They're, we're, again, we're habituating ourselves to something less beautiful. All right, so let me just give you a real life honest example. This is something that happened to me this morning. I woke up, it was one in the morning and I couldn't sleep for the life of me. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. I think I had espresso too late yesterday. And so I went outside and I laid on the couch and I picked up my iPad, right? And I, and I turned on Netflix. And um, it occurred to me as I was opening up my iPad and clicking on Netflix that this really was an unfortunate thing. That back in the day, people probably picked up one of those things, what, what are they called? Uh, books. Yeah, like a book, right? And, and read that. And I, I kind of felt this sort of guilt in me. I'm like, I'm just, you know, path of least resistance, man, you know? And I started watching um, Black Mirror. Is it Black Mirror? Yeah, Black Mirror, Dark Mirror. It's Black Mirror. Um, which, you know, is is a very interesting show, actually. It has some really interesting insights on how technology affects us. But unfortunately, many of these episodes have some pretty awful sexual scenes in it that I'd rather not see. And so about 20 minutes in, something like that, that happened. And I just thought, bugger, I can't do this. So I turned it off. And uh, I chose to chose to do something else. All right. And so I walked into the kitchen and I sat down and I read a short story by Flannery O'Connor. She's from Georgia. That's where I live. And uh, one of America's greatest writers. If you haven't read Flannery O'Connor's short stories, you check it out. Uh, she has a, a collection of short stories. I think it's called a, a Good Man is Hard to Find. I, I read, I think it's called In the Heart of the Park or something like that last night. But anyway, the, but the point is this, like, I, I'm really grateful that I chose to do that. Like, I chose to do something more beautiful than numbing out on Netflix. And I'm not saying that, you know, shows on Netflix can't be beneficial or that they can't give us a legitimate source of pleasure. But I think very often we turn to Netflix for the same reason we turn to junk food right? It just numbs us. It satisfies us. And this is really why we're turning to porn, right? Like porn's just like the biggest number, the biggest satisfier. And it's not really satisfying, but it at least makes us feel calm for about 10 seconds. Uh, and then we feel completely agitated again. So one suggestion would be to cut out Netflix. Yep. I just said that. Like cut out YouTube binging. Uh, I have Covenant Eyes on my computer, you should too, or on your iPhone, and you can actually block particular sites. So I just block Twitter, and uh, I might block soon YouTube as well, because it's just like a black hole that sucks me into it, and I find myself numbing out, scrolling through video after video, you know, it's like all that time is being wasted. And again, I'm going into autopilot, right, where I'm just clicking from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing, and my brain is shutting off. And if you want to be vigilant about not watching porn, having your brain shut off is not a good place to be in. So one way to cut out the, un the banal, as I've been saying, is to maybe seriously limit how much time you spend watching Netflix, right? Uh, another way, I, I, another thing I would suggest cutting down on is podcasts. 
And I know that's ironic given that this is a podcast. So, but yeah, maybe, maybe the only reason you're listening to this podcast is to kind of uh, distract yourself. And if it is, stop listening to it, you know, sit in silence for a while. Uh, but that said, I think there, there is a difference between educational podcasts like this that uh, serve to motivate you, hopefully, and other podcasts that really serve only to distract. Like, for a while now, I, I've just been on this sort of this uh, binge of political podcasts. You know, every day I listen to this political podcast and I thought to myself, you know, the world is always on fire in this these podcasts and maybe it is, but do I really need to know about that? It, 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 be- it became less about educating myself about what's going on in the world and more of just a way to, I don't know, man, just f- get entertained again. Uh, and so I cut that out, I actually blocked the podcast app on my iPad and my iPhone. And so now I found myself desiring it and it's not there. So you know what I got to do instead? If I want to do anything is I listen to an audio book, which is usually way more substantive and helpful than a podcast anyway. I think another thing that we can do uh, in regards to cutting out the banal is uh, to seriously look at the music that we're consuming. Because just like I think there you can say like this tree is more beautiful than this tree or, uh, you know, I think you can say the same thing about music. I think, and, and look, you 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 agree with me as well. Like, even if you're all for saying, like, look, and I, I don't mean to be pretentious here. Like, I like Metallica, you know, <laughs> I like Hillsong, I like Gregorian chant. Like, I like a whole range of different uh, types of music. But um, some music is more beautiful than other music. Some some music is more restful than than other music. And and any everyone agrees with this. Like, when I was uh, a teenager. Uh, my next door neighbor who was younger than me began learning the bagpipes. Now, you really want to tell me that those bagpipes were just as beautiful as any other music? They weren't. They were absolutely awful. It sounded like he was strangling a cat. So let me suggest two uh, beautiful composers that you might want to begin listening to uh, so, you know, your life can be more beautiful. The first is I I really like uh, Giacomo uh, Puccini, who is one of the greatest Italian composers of all time. Here's a song called O Mio Babino Caro, which I think is My Dear Lady or something like that. Like, just listen to this and, 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 and you'll see how what I mean. It's super beautiful. I mean, that is absolutely beautiful. And again, I know this might sound pretentious if I'm telling you to listen to opera or whatever, but that's not the point, you understand? It's not about being pretentious. It's not trying to show other people that you listen to, you know, more cultured, more sophisticated music than them. It's about letting music nourish your soul. I mean, imagine like if you're like dealing with anxiety and stuff and and you're listening to some awful bloody song by Beyonce where the lyrics don't even make sense. Uh, That isn't beautiful. Right, there you go. As I said in the beginning, feel free to disagree with me and I will tell you you're wrong, but feel free to disagree with me. Like that is objectively more beautiful music. Imagine how different your life would be if for the next week or two, instead of listening to talk radio, you listen to beautiful music like that. Here's another composer I want to tell you about. I'm sure you may have heard of Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, he has this song called uh, Jesu, Joy of, of Man's Desiring. Is that? Let me just make sure I got that right. Yeah. Um, and it's gorgeous. So if you listen to this. Again, like really 
beautiful stuff. So that's just another suggestion, all right? So maybe to bring this to a close here, what I'm saying is there's things in your life that aren't making you any happier, all right? And they're not as good, they're not as true, they're not as beautiful as they might be. So if you binge on Netflix and YouTube, turn that off and pick up a beautiful book instead. Let me suggest a couple of books that I read for leisure. One would be J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Now, that's an undertaking, I know, but even if you were to read sections of it, it's just glorious, like so beautiful. Um, I mentioned uh, 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 Flannery O'Connor's work. Those are some short stories there. Who's that bloke who wrote The Time Machine? Uh, um, oh, gosh. H.G. Wells. All right, so... so he, you know, you might not be ready to commit to a full-length book, but you know, he's got some beautiful short stories as well. So those would be just like three suggestions. Like, do you see what I do? You see what I mean? Like, forgive me because all of these thoughts are ruminating and bubbling and and forming in my mind as I try to communicate them. This isn't something I reflected on a great deal. But again, imagine you put away the Netflix and YouTube, you start reading beautiful books. You put away the trashy music, you start listening to beautiful music. Right? You you. you don't you think your life would be better? You put away the junk food and you start trying to eat healthy. You know, like this is what begins to make a beautiful life, I think. You know, when we begin to participate in what's true, good and beautiful. Finally, I want to talk just about silence. Silence is one of those terrifying things that we like to run away from and we like to run away from it because we don't like ourselves. So it'd be like if you knew somebody that you didn't like and they were kind of walking in your general direction, you'd move away from them maybe. Well, what do you do when you're the person you don't like? Same thing. You move away from yourself. And you say, well, how do you do that? By plunging headlong into a myriad of distractions so that you don't have to be with yourself, right? We don't like being with ourselves. Uh, 17th century philosopher Blaise Pascal said, um, uh, it, it, he said, all of mankind's ills can be traced back to the fact that he doesn't know how to sit alone in a dark room silently. Think about that, would you? He doesn't know how to sit alone in a dark room silently. How long can you do that for? How long could I do that for? Like a minute, two, before I start looking for my phone or thinking this is ridiculous and I shouldn't be doing it anyway? So those would be the three suggestions I'd make this week. I know you don't think, or maybe some people don't think it's directly associated with pornography, but since pornography is you know false, bad, and ugly, and we want to begin to love what's truly beautiful, we should begin to engage with things that are genuinely beautiful, right? And we're not going to enjoy everything. I'm not saying like every classical composer is going to be like your cup of tea or, or that, 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 that you're going to enjoy every kind of like so-called classic book. That's not the point. But to find something that stirs the imagination, that catch, captures you up in a world of, of beauty and honor and, and romance and, you know, not trashy romance, right? But like Lord of the Rings kind of romance and glory. It's wonderful. So to begin to do those things as well, because I truly believe just like we can habituate ourselves to love the drab and the ugly, we can also habituate ourselves in the proper direction so that we can get to a point where the idea of pornography is so vulgar and debased that all we feel is genuine pity and sympathy maybe for those wretched people who can't seem to be free of it, and not just can't seem to be free of it, but don't want to be free of it. There's the distinction. There's the distinction between you and me and some others. You know, you want to be free of it, and maybe they don't. So that's my encouragement to you. Do something radical like that. Uh, just last weekend from Friday to Sunday, I turned off my phone and my computer for the weekend. That might be another thing that you want to do. That's another way to grow silent. Silence is more than quiet. Quiet is a prerequisite for silence. Uh, you can't be silent without some sort of quiet in your life. So you shut down the computer, you, you, know, you put away the, the podcasts, your head's still racing a mile a minute, isn't it? But silence can come from that and it's a, it's a beautiful place. So to begin to cultivate that, I think is a beautiful thing. So there you go. I think I've spoken enough. I do apologize if what I've said uh, was a little scattered. Um, as I say, I'm just thinking about these things and, and I, I really want to apply them to myself just as much as, as you all. Um, I am traveling to Canada tomorrow on a trip and uh, my laptop is broken. I'm super pumped that my laptop is broken actually because I can't bring it with me to distract myself. So I've got some books. Yeah, I'm going to bring some Thomas Aquinas. I'm going to bring the Holy Bible. I'm going to bring some Flannery O'Connor. And um, if I'm bored, I'm going to listen to beautiful music, read good things, and, and try to fill my head with beautiful things. You know, like that's what it's about. 
You know, like we can fill our minds with beautiful things or ugly things. And whatever we fill our mind with, our behaviors are going to follow that. Like if all you do is fill your mind with ugly things and porn, like your behaviors are going to be super gross and uninteresting. And this is a lie I think that the porn industry wants us to believe, you know, like the, the porn industry wants us to believe that if we were fully alive, that we would immerse ourselves in porn, you know, like I saw a tweet the other day that said, porn hub will never break your heart. And I just thought, what a despicable thing to say. Yeah, well, um, yeah, but you can't grow old with Pornhub. You can't share your love with Pornhub. You, uh, Pornhub won't there be, be there when you're sad to comfort you, to encourage you, right? It's just this disgusting, perverted thing that treats human beings like things, and they're not. And so it's gross, you know. All right, I've said enough. Hey, I want to invite you to become part of the Love People Use Things campaign. Noah Church and I have a lot of things that we want to do. All right. Like I want to start doing like weekly videos. I want to create a Facebook page to, you know, create weekly encouraging videos to you, for y'all. I can't do these sorts of things without money because it all takes time away from other things that I'm doing. We want to start doing monthly live streams with special guests like therapists and people to teach parents. Like we do have a lot of plans. None of it can happen without your support. So I want to encourage you to give us 10 bucks a month. And if you do give us 10 bucks a month, I will send you a free t-shirt and a free Love People Use Things sticker, and you'll have access to our upcoming live streams. Uh, we had other gifts that we were giving away in the past, but uh, due to a lack of funds, we have to now just give these away. But hey, it's still friggin' bloody awesome. <laughs> if you've ever seen, by the way, Noah Church is doing these amazing videos and he's wearing the Love People Use Things t-shirt so you can see how great it looks on him. You won't look as attractive as him, but you'll look close maybe, right? So you'll get that, you'll get the sticker um, and, and we have a lot of things planned, but we need your support. So again, go to patreon.com slash love people or go to lovepeopleusethings.fm and click, you know, donate and give us 10 bucks a month. We greatly appreciate it. Also, um, some of you are struggling with porn a lot right now and you're thinking this once a week podcast isn't enough. I want to seriously encourage you to do, well, two things, okay? So, um, Noah Church does private coaching. And you should seriously consider looking into it, just contacting him and asking him about it, because I think it would be really helpful to you. When you go to lovepeopleusethings.fm, there's a get help section, and you drag your cursor over it, and there's private coaching, and that'll teach you how to show you how to get in touch with, um, with Noah. That'd be really cool. Eh? Also, um, there's a wonderful program online by Fight the New Drug. It's called Fortify. It's an excellent online recovery program, which is designed to equip those people struggling with pornography, uh, young or old, with the tools and education and community, that's what's really cool about it too, to assist you in reaching lasting freedom. It's amazing. It looks like Google created it. They, I think I, they haven't told me, but it looks like they're putting millions of dollars into this thing. It's so well done. Anyway, if you use the promo code Love People Use Things, that will show them that we sent you and it'll make them like us more. And more importantly, it'll give you 10% off. So, um, fortifyprogram.org I think it is let me see Fort this is the problem when you do um, podcasts on the fly and you don't edit them a great deal you gotta do this ah here we go fortifyprogram.org check that out eh and check out Noah's services too if, if you think you need that okay well you'll hear from Noah next week and me the week after thank you for tuning in to Love People Use Things please leave us a review on iTunes and tell everybody you know about this podcast because we think what we're saying is helpful and beneficial and we hope you do too and uh, so therefore, we think it'll be beneficial to other people. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.